Bill Kelly, Ireland, 1860 My dear and loving son, John Your good friend, the schoolmaster, Pag Magnamaras So good as to write these words down Your brothers have all gone to find work in England the house is so empty and sad The crop of potatoes is sorely infected A third and a half of them bad Your sister Bridget and Patrick O'Donnell Are going to be married in June Your mother says not to work on the railroad be sure to come on home soon. Kilkelly, Ireland, 18 and 70, my dear and loving son John. Hello to your missus and to your four children, may they grow healthy and strong. Michael's got a wee bit of trouble I suppose that he never will learn Because of the dampness there's no turf to speak of Now we have nothing to burn Bridget is happy you named a child for her And now she's got six of her own Say you found work, but you don't say what kind or when you will be coming home. Kill Kelly, Ireland, 18 and 80, dear Michael and John, my sons. I'm sorry to give you the very sad news that your dear old mother has. in Kilkelly, your brothers and Bridget were there. You don't have to worry, she died very quickly. Remember in your prayers. So good to hear that Michael's returning with money he's sure to buy land. For the promised She said he was cheerful and healthy right down to the end. You should have seen him play with the grandchildren of Batman, my your friend. We 
Buried in my long side of mother Down at the Kilkelly churchyard He was a strong and feisty old man Considering his life was so hard And it's funny the way he kept talking about you He called out for you in the end Oh, why don't you think about coming to visit? We'd all love to see you again. Why don't you think about coming to visit? We'd all love to see you again. Bar, County Mayo, Ireland, January 1st, 1956. Dear Edward and Redmond, I'm here in the county home now and I was telling this grand nurse about you all in America. I told her I was no good with the pen, so she offered to write a letter for me. I was on my own at home and fit for nothing, and the old house was failing and Ty Oak said the house would fall in on top of you. Declare to God what he told me on his first visit that the day after I left, the lintel collapsed over the front door. But that scoundrel brother of yours is a devil for stories and probably made it up to plays my mind. To tell the honest truth, I was afraid of ending up in the county home. It used to be the workhouse and I'd heard the awful stories. My heart was above in my mouth the day I arrived. It's not like that anymore at all, Tygo said, and he was right. They have proper nurses with white uniforms starched like the collar you'd put on your shirt for mass on Sunday morning. They have me bothered with all the eating and drinking. I get a cup of tea at seven o'clock in the morning and another lash thing at night. There's fierce change come over the country, mostly for the better. We're getting like America now. It's hard to believe people like ourselves here in Mayo are now getting born into houses with electric light and water running to the door in a pipe. Tygold's son, James, got driving an enormous machine in England and saved his money. Then he bought a nice farm back here when there was nobody left to take over the place because all the sons died with consumption. He married a local girl that went to England too. They have a baby daughter and another baby on the way. Didn't they have great courage to come back? And would you believe, young James bought the first tractor in the parish. Now he's gone from morning to night working for the farmers, putting out the dung in spring, cutting hay all summer, and drawing home the turf in the year's back end. They say there won't be a horse left soon. They still need the ass and cleaves for the soft bog. I let this nice nurse home to her own people now. God bless ye, mother. <laughs> 